In the previous video, we looked at the soil profile and the various layers present in it. Does the cross-sectional view of the soil layers look somewhat like this? Yes, it does. Let us look at each layer, that is, each horizon in detail in this video. The first layer is the O horizon. Why does the series begin with O? Well, here O literally means organic. So this layer is basically composed of organic matter. The presence of humus makes this layer appear very dark in colour. What is humus, you might ask? Humus is the organic matter formed from dead and decomposed animal bodies or plant parts. The presence of organic matter makes this layer rich in nutrients and also dark in appearance. After the O horizon, the next layer is the A horizon, that is this part. This layer is also referred to as topsoil, but it's not at the top. Then why do we name it so? It's because the layer is actually the first layer of soil, though the O horizon occupies some part at the top. That is the reason why it's called the A horizon. This layer generally consists of humus and several minerals. That is why plant roots grow well in this layer. Not only this, but also organisms like little worms and even a few types of rodents can occupy this layer. It is this layer which is a home for many organisms. Next in the list is the B horizon. This layer is also called the subsoil. Sub here refers to below. That means the layer present below the topsoil. This layer has a reddish tone. It is mainly due to the presence of many minerals. The B horizon consists of several minerals embedded in it. Amongst all, Iron oxide is found in very large quantities. That is the major reason for the B horizon to appear reddish brown in colour. However, this region is very much different from the layers above and below it. In spite of presence of minerals and clay in this layer, the layer is very compact and hard. Only a few large trees have their roots growing in this region. What comes after the B region? Yes, it's the C horizon. Can you notice the presence of these cracked rocks? Is this indicating that this region consists of only rocks? Well, not rocks exactly, but this region has weathered parent rocks. What are weathered parent rocks? We know what weathering is. It's simply the process by which huge rocks break down into smaller pieces. This further gives rise to the formation of soil. Now, if there is soil above and if these rocks appear weathered, then does that mean that these rocks are responsible for the soil formation? Well, yes. This sea horizon has weathered parent rocks, which means the rocks that are cracked and which will crack further for the formation of soil. So if these rocks are weathered, then where are the huge unweathered rocks? Well, the unweathered rocks are located below this layer, that is in the last horizon. The layer is called R horizon, which means the bedrock. The R horizon consists of only huge unweathered rocks. These, when cracked due to any reason, give rise to the formation of the layer above. This layer is very hard and is extremely difficult to dig through with the generally used digging instruments like the axe or a hoe. So, this was about the soil profile, the vertical section through which various soil layers can be seen. Now let us move ahead and talk about the various types of soil in the upcoming videos.